In this video, we're going to be solving systems of quadratics by graphing, and you'll be glad to know that, well, of course, when we do it by graphing, it's going to be um, a lot easier. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to enter these into our calculator. So I just want to let you notice that these are equals. And because they're equals, we're only going to be looking for intersections. So let's make sure that we know that, that these equals here means that we're looking for the intersection. Sometimes there's one, sometimes there's two, sometimes there's none of the functions. Okay, so when I put this into my calculator, and I go ahead and graph it. I always like to graph it to get a good look at uh, an idea of what it is that I'm going to be graphing. And then, um, so that means that my intersection should be there and there. I'm going to go ahead, we're going to go ahead and graph it on paper just so that you could get uh, a picture in your notes of what you're doing. So I'm going to go to my table, and if you see in my table, I have two sets of Y's. And that can be a little confusing for students. So let's turn off our Y2. If we go down to Y2, go to the equal sign, and we put Enter. Then um, when we go back to our table, we only have one value of functions. So let's see. We can do negative, negative 1, 0 is right here. 0, negative 1 is right here. 1, 0 is right here. 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. 4, uh, 3, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I need to scroll and then do the other side. So I have um, negative 2, 3. And I have negative 3, 8. So only do one function at a time. And this is a parabola, so it's curved. It's not a V. I'm going to draw that in. So this there, that there was my first function. So now I'm going to do my second function. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to turn off that equals, and I'm going to turn that equals on. And then, of course, it's going to graph just the second function. So I'm going to go to second table. And I'm actually going to do this in another color. So I can't graph 45 and 24, but I can graph negative 2, 9. So negative 2, 9 is right here. And negative 1, 0. Negative 1, 0 is right here. Notice that those points share. So that's probably my intersection. 0, negative 3 is here. And then I have 1, 0. Those points share right there. And then I have 2, 9. So this is a really tight function, but we can see that my intersections are right here. So right there and right there are the intersections. And the intersections we're at negative 1, 0, and 1, 0. So let's go ahead and do this in our calculator. Um, we're going to have our calculator do it. So I'm going to turn them both on, just in case sometimes those are not nice um, integers. I'm going to go ahead and make this in black so that we can see that better. The pen didn't show up too well. Okay, so right here and right here, those are my intersections of both functions. So I'm simply going to do second trace intersect number five. I'm going to move over to the left side. I'm going to do enter. And it's, the second one came in close to where I want it. 
and I can see it's negative 1, 0, which is what that one was. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to move that over close to where I want it. I'm going to put enter, 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 and I get 1, 0. So my solutions here, so my solutions are negative 1, 0 and 1, 0. Okay, so you have to make sure that you have your x, y value. So when we go to do the inequality, so notice that the functions are exactly the same. We just did the inequality. So if you remember what your points were, um, going back to my table, I had negative uh, 3 and 8. And I had negative 2 and 3. I had negative 1, 0. And then I had 0, negative 1. And then I had 1, 0, 2, 3, and 3, 8. So now when I draw these in, this is going to be dashed because there's no equal sign at all. So I have to make that line dashed on the edge of my parabola. And of course, there's arrows at the top. So then if I go to do the second one, I'll do that one in red. I had negative 2, 9. I had negative 1, 0. I had 0, negative 3. And then I had 1, 0. And then I had 2, 9. 2, 9. Just making sure I have that right. 2, 9 because this one looks funny. I think this one's supposed to be over here. So that means this one's also dashed. This is a mistake. My eye got off. So I'm going to make sure I go through all those points that I was supposed to go through. Okay. So the difference between this one and the one that we did here is they're solid lines because there's an equal sign. And here I'm looking for the intersection. Because these are inequalities, I'm actually looking for the region. There's no equal mark on either one of these, so those both are, are um, dashed lines. So now, if you remember from what we did before, on this one, I'm looking for where y is less than the equation. So that one was this first one. So if I go to my y-intercept, y gets smaller below. So it's going to be everything below the blue function. And this one here is going to be everything where y gets bigger, above the red function. So the region should just be this little spot right in here, that region right there. So let's do it on the calculator to make sure I'm correct. So when we go to y equals, we go over to the left, and we're going to change that to be less than, because y is less than. My triangle on the bottom means less than. So I'm going to go enter OK. And so when I graph it, you're going to see that that's going to graph below the blue. So that's exactly what it did but I want the region where they share. So when I go to um, so when I go to my other y equals that one there has to be greater than. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to change that oh, wrong thing. I'm going to change that to be greater than my triangles on the top. So now this is saying my y is greater than and when I graph it we're going to see where the double region is. So that's my blue, and then now comes in my red. And we can see where the purple is, is the shared region. 
So that means on this graph, and I was hoping that this graph paper um, was going to be big enough, but it wasn't. That means that I'm going to color in this region here. So that's where my solution is. So the solution is the shaded region. And that's all I have to do, and I'm done.